Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. Hey, uh, you know, it's not necessarily Christmas time in the uh, in the city, but I'll tell you what it is, it's butchering time out here in the country. Uh, every year we kind of get together and, and do our own butchering, you know, beef and and, uh, and pork. And right now, I don't know if you saw a video or two ago, uh, we put 663 pounds of beef in the cooler, four quarters of beef. Well, this Saturday, just a couple of days from now, we're going to go ahead and cut that uh, all them big pieces into little bitty pieces, make them all pretty, uh, seal them up, you know, with a vacuum seal and put them in the freezers at the different families and we'll be good to go for another year, at least for beef anyway. Uh, we just recently relocated the butchering operation over here. We don't have any hot water running in his shop and so instead of stretching 170 foot of hose and then running his water heater plumb crazy, we go ahead and use this old kettle like we did last year. I don't know if I videoed anything on it at all, but this is our old butchering kettle from out on the home place. This thing's 48 inch diameter. God, good Lord only knows how old it is. It might be from the Army. Uh, my grandfather had got a lot of military surplus uh, stuff for butchering and for handling large quantities of, of food, you know, in the mess halls and everything. So we've got the big dippers, the big ladles, and all that kind of stuff, too. Uh, that's over to much older brother's house. Um, but I, this could be a kettle from that era. I, I have absolutely no idea. That's what I'm doing. I've got, got to get this thing all cleaned up, get it all rinsed out and everything, and get fresh water in it. Because as you know, when you butcher, you know, you got to have stuff to clean up all your knives and everything. Uh, got to clean your table and saw and everything after everything's done. So uh, you got to have everything ready. So we'll be firing this up, cleaning this up today, and then uh, getting ready to put fresh water in it Saturday morning and fire it up again to maintain us some uh, pretty hot water for, uh, for what we need for the butchering process for the day. How long has it been since you've seen a 48-inch cast iron kettle? Uh, bet it's been a while, hasn't it? I was planning on build, on building a uh, somewhat of a butcher shop over here, completely and exclusively for butchering, you know, with the walk-in cooler uh, built into the back end of it. But lumber prices, of course, you know how everything happened this summer. They just skyrocketed, went absolutely crazy. So I put that project on hold. So now we have to do this again for a, a second year over here. I'm all for keeping the old ways kind of up, you know, in tradition and all that, you know, and getting uh, things done the way we kind of used to. But I don't want to go all the way back to the old, old ways. That was just a brutal time, man. Well, we're in pretty good shape. Obviously, we still have the jib on the small Kubota for moving those quarters up here. And I've got that homemade 270-gallon fuel oil tank trailer. I think we built that one in 1982 when I got my B7200. That's actually on the buzz saw today. But that way, we'll make sure we keep plenty of wood here. It doesn't all take all that much. I've had the fire going for two or three minutes and I got about maybe 10 or 15 gallons, maybe about 15 gallons of water in it. Just warm it up so I can scrub that inside. Getting a little warm, not so hot I can't touch it yet, but uh, it's not boiling obviously. But we're going to go ahead and rinse this several times um, and then make sure we have good fresh water, you know, for cleaning everything. Cut them glasses off a little bit. You can see it doesn't take much of a fire to uh, to get that water up to temperature. It's right at the boiling point right now. It's about 210 degrees. Uh, a lot of steam coming off of it. But as you can tell, whenever I was scrubbing the outside edge of the uh, the kettle, um, it's really, really kind of toasty in there. Look how nice and clean it's burning. Look at the top of the stack. Nothing but heat vapors coming off the top of the stack. No smoke at all. That way you know you've got a good uh, good quantity of combustion air and you've got a good clean burn going. Well, like I say, I have to scrub this out just a couple more times, put a couple, uh, couple more batches of fresh water in it, clean that out, and I got a rag to kind of dry all the, uh, the residual out, and then we'll be good to go for, uh, for Saturday morning. Has a nice, clean, hot water for doing all the cleanup. 
Now this top on here, it's on there for a particular purpose, and that's to kind of keep all the heat in there when you're heating your water. But also, this is the kettle that we always cooked our head meat in when we butcher hog. And it's going to have the tongues, the snouts, the, the big knuckles, or you know, or the feet. Um, uh, just hog jowls, you know, the, the head part cut in half, the snouts cut off and everything, you know. Um, and the tails and everything, tongues, heart, all that good stuff. That'll all be cooked down, you know, and that's what you make that, um, what they call swatamaga out of, head cheese, essentially. Uh, none of us really, in particular, care for it anymore now that the old man's gone. But uh, we did every year, you know, for years and years and years, because the old man really enjoyed it, really liked it. I could take a little of it, not a whole lot. But this cover's on there, you know, like I said, to keep that heat in. But it's also so that you can lift up half of it. Just like this right here. And you can reach in here with your scoop, and then you can dip out the different things. You know, you can reach in here if you want to take a slice off a of hog tongue or a little bit of heart. You reach in there and you, you dabble in there and pull out whatever it is that you want and then close it back and then go back to business of doing whatever it is you're doing. All in all, it's a pretty good way of cooking a whole big pile of meat uh, in no time at all. Hope you all enjoyed a little bit of the preparation. Uh, by no means is it all of it, uh, by any stretch. And you know what? This is Tracker Man 44. And I'm out of here, guys.